so accurately pointed out. We'll do our best to keep you apprised of Jimmy Garcia's condition. You know, Roy, sometimes in this game you lose not because of your weakness, but because of your strength. And because of that strength, that gameness, that willingness, he went too far. And there should be adults out there who can say when you've gone too far. A very hard thing to judge, though, because how do they really know who has gone too far sometime and who hasn't? It's an inexact science at best. So an uneasy quiet for a moment here inside the Caesars Palace Outdoor Arena. And now the music starts up as Johnny Tapia begins to make his way in. Johnny Tapia, great personal story out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And check it, that's not Tapia, that's his opponent, Ricardo Vargas. Yep, thank you very much, Roy Jones Jr., pointing out to me that it's Vargas. So this is Ricardo Vargas out of Tijuana, Mexico. And he'll be fighting at 114 pounds now against Johnny Tapia. Mills Lane getting ready to referee this one, and you see the ring record brought to you by The Ring, the Bible of Boxing. Ricardo Vargas, 20 wins, four losses, two draws, only seven KOs. By his own admission, he is strictly a boxer, and he's getting ready to go against a pretty hard puncher. Johnny Tapia out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, 29 wins and one draw in his professional boxing career. He is 28 years old, started boxing as a professional back in 1988, was well on his way to superstar prominence in the lower weight classes, when in 1990 he exited for drug rehabilitation. And he and his career lost three and a half years in the ring because of his difficulties in overcoming substance abuse problems of many different kinds. But he's back, has been back for about a year and a half, He's winning again, 29-0-1 with 18 KOs, and here now, another chance to polish his credentials as he looks down the road toward a possible big showdown with another Albuquerque, New Mexico fighter, Danny Romero. Doesn't he look foolish that way? <laughs> with that hat on top of the hood. <laughs> Not Dale of the stylish, tape. stylish, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Dale of the tape, Johnny Tapia, 28. Five years older than Ricardo Vargas. Yeah, you can see the top, he is two inches taller. And look at what happened between their weights yesterday and tonight, Larry. Yeah. Vargas, who normally weighs in heavier than 114, obviously dehydrated himself to get down to this weight and has added 12 pounds overnight. There's an interesting experiment going on here in Las Vegas relevant to this. They're trying to see how much weight fighters are putting on in the 24 to 28 hours after after these weigh-ins. All of that prompted by James Tony's extraordinary weight gain in the 24 hours before his ill-fated entrance into the ring against Roy Jones Jr. The rules, Harold. The Johnny Tappy ricardo Vargas fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, but Jim, in this fight, the three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight, and he can be saved by the bell in the last round only. James. All right, Harold, and just before we go up to Michael Buffer, I'll tell you that Jimmy Garcia was conscious as he was transported to the hospital. He is going to get a CAT scan at the hospital. Medical authorities call it precautionary. We'll give you the results as soon as we get them. Right now, let's go up the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the pre-fight introductions. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Bud Weiser, present World Championship Boxing sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission along with the World Boxing Organization. President Francisco Balcarcel, supervisor at ringside for the WBO for this bout, Jerry Woolard. The three judges scoring this contest on a 10-point must system will be Bill Graham, Clark San Martino, and Dolby Shirley. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action referee, Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Palace, 12 rounds of boxing for the Junior Bantamweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the green, red, white, and weighing 114 pounds, his professional record. 20 victories against four defeats with two draws, seven KOs to his credit, 
Damas y caballeros, con Tijuana, México, the challenger, Ricardo Chapo Vargas. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trimmed in turquoise, weighing in at 115 pounds. His professional record, 29 and 0, with one draw, 18 of his 29 victories by KO, he is the pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undefeated WBO Junior Bantamweight Champion of the World, the baby-faced assassin, Johnny Tapia. Okay, now look, if he goes right here, it's gonna be all right. If you go right here, it's gonna be okay. Now, we've already gone through all the instructions in the dressing room for the championship of the world. Take a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger? From the champion, let's get it on. They tell me, guys, that if Tapia fought Romero in Albuquerque, it could fill a football stadium, but he's gotta keep winning right here. Johnny Tapia, via his struggles with cocaine and alcohol, has seen the bottom. He wants to see the top, and for him, that would be a matchup with Romero in Albuquerque. To get it, he must win this fight and keep hoping that Danny Romero will come to him. Yeah, yeah there's, there's already been discussions about this, and within the next six months, we might see another neighborhood showdown for a championship. Round one begins. Ricardo Vargas says that he knows Johnny Tapia is the puncher in this fight. He plans to move, stick the jab, and not present a still target at any moment for Tapia's heavy punch. And that's a very smart technique, a very smart way to fight Tapia because Tapia is a strong, sharp puncher. But the one thing that we have to also watch tonight is that uh, the other guy, Vargas, has gone up to 126, which is where he probably came from to make the limit of 114, so he is the bigger of the two tonight. Well, only two things can happen as a result of that weight gain from last night, 12 pounds from 114 to 126. Either he'll be slower and more sluggish than he should be, or he'll be a lot stronger than Tapia expects him to be. Maybe he's not that strong, strong of a puncher in the beginning, so he may not be stronger than Tapia expects, but he may be able to absorb more. I spoke to Flip Hamansky before the fights tonight about this experiment they're doing in, in uh, measuring weights just before the fight. And he said that the idea of having early weigh-ins was so the fighters could rehydrate quicker and, and uh, cause less of a danger to themselves by being dehydrated going into the fight. But here again, Larry, I think uh, Vargas may turn out to be a little bit more stronger than, uh, than Tapia may expect. Because he looks big, he looks much bigger than Tapia. But unlike Gabriel Ellis, who came out winging power shots, Tapia has uh, taken the first round to get a look at Vargas, try to stick the jab a few times, and until that right hand and left hook, he hadn't thrown a lot of power shots. Now he lands a right hand up top and backs Vargas into the ropes. Tapia already has a nosebleed, but Tapia is game, so you know he'll fight forever. But Vargas looks like the type of boxer that is able uh, or, yeah, he's able to stay outside and do just what he wants to do when he gets ready. He's not getting trapped into or getting lured into trading punches. He's sticking to his game, and this is very smart. Vargas fundamentally sound, up on his toes, has a pretty good jab, rocks Tapia with a right hand over the top. His punches, Tapia punches seem to have no effect on Vargas, though. But Vargas, every time he hits Tapia, he opens up a new scar. Johnny Tapia already with a mouse under his left eye. Taking some surprising punishment the first round from Ricardo Vargas. And Vargas digs a left hook to the body. Tapia with a lightning left hook in return. But like I said before, Tapia's punches seem to have no effect on Tapia. Oh, so big. That was a bad round for Tapia. Bloody nose and a puffed left eye already. That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You get the feel of it. 
Just, you're a little bit too over anxious now, Johnny. Yeah. Don't get too over anxious. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Don't 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 get don't get so, so over anxious. Okay. Just take your time. Just Am I too straight up? Yeah, you are. You gotta you give them a little more movement, and you're not throwing punches in combination. Okay. Okay. All right. You're doing all right. Just keep moving around. Kind of some good you're right kind of with the right hand. Lead, lead right hand, but you gotta follow up on it. All right. Okay. Give me the water. Give me the water. Tapia trying to figure out Garcia while Garcia is landing punches. I'm sorry, Vargas. Vargas is working off his jab and it's very effective right now against Tapia. What if you saw Vargas land that right hand over the top? That's where Tapia got the mouse under the left eye. And that mouse begins to swell. Human interest story in the corner. 76-year-old trainer manager Paul Chavez has been with Johnny Tapia from the beginning of his boxing career as an amateur, including the three and a half year wait while Tapia battled his drug and alcohol demons. Johnny Tapia says of the 76-year-old Chavez, I'd give his life for him. I'd give my life for him after what he's done for me. And that's very good and that's being, uh, being the right, I think that's the way you should be with your manager trainer. But May I ask one question? Did he use an inswell on his eye then? I didn't see it. I was uh, uh, going to ask that, but I thought maybe it's a little early and he didn't think he needed it yet. We'll see in the subsequent rounds. But we do see Tapia following instructions by trying to throw the right and follow up behind it. Vargas is using very good movement here. It's enabling him to catch Tapia over and over again with the right hand because he doesn't sit right in front of Tapia. This is smart boxing to me. He's not a strong, strong puncher, but he's much bigger than Tapia, so it will be effective. Good right hand. This is why when I used to fight 160, I didn't mind coming from 180 and 185 to make 160 because I knew I had a size advantage on most middleweights, and their punches were very ineffective against me, even though I don't get hit much. Vargas is a very unusual cutie for a Mexican fighter. You don't see many fighters from south of the border fight this way. Hard left hand by Tapia. Doesn't seem to shake Vargas's confidence. He comes back with three jabs and a right hand of his own. Vargas has had a couple of early chances to taste Tapia's power and doesn't seem to be too moved by it. And mainly I think it's because of the weight difference. That's right, he does present the bigger picture in there for sure. Tapia now has a bloody mouth as well as a bloody nose and a puffed up right eye. Tapia just missing with the right hand there. It was a glancing blow even though he had an open shot. Vargas not with a lot of head movement. He relies on his feet to keep him out of trouble. And I think his feet, your feet are your best defense. That's the way I was taught. That's what I think right now is enabling me to stand over the rest of the field because I don't use my hands so much for defense as I do my feet. Round two coming to a close. Surprisingly good first two rounds for the challenger, Ricardo Vargas of Mexico. I gave that round to Tapia, but it was a tough round. <laughs> You're waiting too long. You're waiting too long. You're waiting too long, Johnny. Okay. You can't wait so long. You gotta, you gotta go first every time, okay? Okay. Otherwise, you, don't, don't, don't get over anxious. Don't get over anxious now. Okay. Just take your time. You're doing a good job. Okay. So you're not throwing no combinations, you know? I can't get in it. He's moving. Well, I'll catch him now. Cut the ring off on the guy. Okay. 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 Tell you a superficial cut in his brow is the butt. No problem. Unintentional. Unintentional. Oh, that's right. Hey. No te me quedes, no te desesperes, güey. ¿Eh? Ya sé que te estás curando el güey, no te me desesperes, ¿eh? Tú boxeelo, solo se va a volar. Sáltale, no te le quedes adentro, ¿eh? Respirando, respirando. Estoy notando una cosa, ¿eh? Fíjate con lo que te estoy diciendo. Termine con el jefe, sincero, termine con el jefe. Termine con el jefe, ¿eh? Termine con el uno, dos, ahora sí. Right now, Johnny Tapia looks like he's in the fight of his life to get him to the fight of his life against Danny Romero. 
Vargas is cornerman telling him to faint and then come with the jab. So they want him to faint before the jab, thinking that Johnny Tapia reacts to that. The one thing that I see that's helping Vargas out is that when he moves, Tapia is set in his tracks. So when he decides to come out Tapia, Tapia cannot get out the way because he's already set in his tracks. He has to first come up on his toes, then move out the way. Vargas stays on his toes, so he doesn't have to do nothing but just come in. And there's no way Tapia can get out the way in time. Tapia holding his cup to indicate to Mills Lane that he believes Vargas is hitting him low. Vargas took advantage of the opportunity to step in and pop a combination on Johnny Tapia. Tapia is a very good fighter. He's a very game guy. I hate to see him in the ring at this big size disadvantage like this because you hate to see the game guys go down and have such a hard fight. And over and over again, he's going to find himself in this situation if he continues to fight guys with this big size. Hard left hand by Tapia. Vargas continuing to move well on his feet and That's continuing to land jabs. Two good body shots there by Johnny, huh? Very good shots, but Tapia is bleeding everywhere. Tapia will have to be concerned about his health later on in this fight. When you're the puncher and you're trying to do damage as Tapia is, but you're already dinged up with the mouse under your eye and blood coming from your nose, how big a distraction is that? It's a very big distraction. Then you're much smaller than the guy, so it seems like everything you do does no good. You know, he can't hurt this guy. He hasn't even buckled this guy yet because of the size advantage. Disadvantage, I mean. That's right. Get him off, get off the neck. Come, 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 come. Step back. Come, come, come. Many of you in the viewing audience, no doubt, thinking more about Jimmy Garcia than you are about these two fighters. Well, we can tell you that Dr. Al Capanna, a neurosurgeon with boxing-related experience, is the man who went in the ambulance with Jimmy Garcia to the hospital. He's the one who will be administering the CAT scan and will report the results via cellular phone to Dr. Flip Homansky, whom you see sitting in the background at ringside there. So, Homansky continues to monitor by cell phone. Dr. Capanna, a neurosurgeon, is on the scene and will keep you posted on Jimmy Garcia's condition. Tapia getting inside just a little bit more frequently, but he pays the price as Vargas lands a hard left hand. Now, I'll tell you, I like this Vargas kid. He uses his feet very wisely. Uh, Tapia's trying to get him to swap with him right now, but I don't think it'll happen. And we look at Oscar De La Hoya. Warming up in his dressing room. Earlier, Oscar was reclining and smiling, and now he begins to try to work himself into a sweat. The sun has set, darkness falls on the outdoor arena, and we are one bout away from Rafael Ruelos on the right, Oscar De La Hoya on the left. Biggest battle between Los Angeles based fighters since the 1970s. It's bigger because the fight you're referring to is, let's listen to the corner first. Come in easy once you throw the jab. Okay. Okay. I'm ready, babe. The fight in the 70s was Bobby Chacon and Danny Red Lopez, both future champions, not champions at the time. Johnny Tapia momentarily losing his mouth guard as he came out for round number four. In the third round, Roy Jones, Vargas had 84 punches to only 57 for Tapia. So if Vargas is able to stay busier than Johnny and stay away from the power shots, he could mount a lead on the scorecards here. Yeah, and I don't think the power shots are no way effective against him because of his weight difference. I told you before, the weight sometimes enables you to be able to absorb much more then if you were at the same size. Yeah, it anchors you to the ground. Isaac Newton told us that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't add power, you're saying, but it does add some strength. No, it doesn't necessarily add power, but it does add strength. And sometimes it will seem to add power because, because it's more mass, so therefore it has to be strength behind it. You think if James Tony hadn't put on 15 pounds in the 24 hours before he fought you, that you would have knocked him out? Yes. And I think if I ever see him again, I'll knock him out. 
So it, next time it won't make a difference. But my thing was, just like this guy Vargas here, not to go in there and swap with the bigger guy. Well, Vargas is the bigger here, but not to go in there and trade. Go in there and outbox the guy. That's the name of this game, boxing. You go in, use your head. If you get a knockout, good. But if you don't, don't worry about it. That's not the sport. It's not called knockout. It's called boxing. Well, it requires the talent that you've earned over years of work in the gym, and clearly Ricardo Vargas has put in the work. He's a good boxer. Come on, come on, come on. And his boxing skills are giving Johnny Tapia a lot of trouble right now. Tapia, the heavy favorite. And, and it's not to take nothing away from Tapia because sometimes these are the type of fights that make good fights. Uh, Tapia's just the puncher. He used to being a puncher. He used to having the guy sit there with him that he can trade with, and that's right down his alley. This guy's just smart enough not to do that. Tapia's whole background, of course, is one of trying to beat the odds. So he's at home here with a badly marked up face, a weight disadvantage going against a fighter who has succeeded early against him. Fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. Tapia is throwing some very good body shots. This may slow Vargas down later on. You never can tell until that point, uh, until it reaches that point. That was a good hook by Tapia. But every time Tapia hits Vargas, Vargas hits Tapia. And when he doesn't hit Vargas, Vargas hits Tapia. And as the left eye begins to swell for Tapia, might Vargas go to more lead right hands? Uh, no, he should just stick to what he's doing. He's getting the job done well, going in behind the jab and the uh, left hook. Occasionally, he's landing a right hand. That's good enough. Tapia has a habit of sort of commenting with his nods and shakes of his head about what's going on in the ring. Yes, that was a good punch. No, that didn't get me. I got you. Nothing wrong with that. He's just, just an active guy, you know. He's real hyper, and that's how those guys are sometimes. He's a good sportsman, though. That's better now. Give me the fun. That's better now. Okay. See, you know, now you're starting to go first. Give me your tongue. You're starting to go first now. That's all you got to do. The wrist comes easy. The wrist comes easy. Huh? Just keep that, keep that jab in his face, Johnny. You got a hell of a jab. Let's use it now. Nothing, nothing, not ready. Okay. I see him using okay. the end swell there, Roy. Just settle down. And I think he should have started a little earlier. Just. Harold Letterman. Go ahead, Larry. Score after four rounds. Well, it's nice to be wanted by everybody. I've got a two to two, 38-38. You know, one very, very important thing in scoring a fight, Jim, is you don't score the blood. You score the punches. Johnny Tapia does get busted up more easy, but I really thought in rounds two and four, he did more damage with the power shots. You and I are on the same wavelength, Harold. As round five begins, I like that comment, Harold. You don't score the blood, but blood can influence people, can influence the crowd, even judges. Without, without question, it does influence the judges, and that's the problem. I just hope for Tapia that the blood and the sweating doesn't become a problem late, later on in the fight. Well, they'll certainly spur his determination, need it to be spurred any further. And slowly, imperceptibly, Roy, I think Johnny Tapia is shortening the distance between himself and Vargas. And it seems that he's now catching up with Vargas more. I think he's finally figuring out what it takes to catch him. He's cutting the ring off. He's not just standing there waiting. Remember before I told you he was just waiting and he was getting hit because he was right there dead in his track. Now he's not dead in his track. He's being first. And I think that'll be very effective for him. Mills Lane with a lecture for both fighters. Lately, Mills Lane has been taking points away from fighters who punch low. Uh, so if there's another low, low blow, you can be sure a, a point will be taken. Yeah, now Tap is getting smarter. He's fighting, oh, good body shot. He's fighting trying to hold Vargas so he can punch him. Vargas can't just come at will now because he doesn't know if Tapia's there now. Now when Tapia stands still, stands still, he does come, so. Vargas with a really good sequence there, outlanded Tapia in two toe-to-toe -to -toe confrontations. His confidence soars again. This is a very skillful fault, fault, fight. Both guys are very good te technicians. They're doing a good job of trying to use their heads. One guy take the lead, then the other guy come back and take the lead. That's the marks of a great fight. 
Left hook inside by Johnny Tapia. Vargas continues to bounce on his toes, using those feet so well to defend himself. He also has a small mouth under his left eye now because he's getting caught more. Tapia beginning to release the right hand a lot more quickly as Vargas comes toward him. tells him to keep it up and Johnny with a little Japanese bow and now he wants Vargas as Vargas threw one at the bell and that's a little misplaced. Johnny himself tried to throw a left and a right after the bell at the end of round one. Don't worry about the crowd. Don't worry about the crowd. Like I said before, John is a hyper guy. He is that. Okay. Don't worry about the crowd. We had so much fun talking to him yesterday. You got to root for him. He's the kind of guy you can't help but to like once you talk to him. There's the end swell. Give him a Keep me, bro. All you got to do is go first, Johnny. Never mind. Just. This was the end of the preceding round, and that was Tapia going after Vargas after the bell had sounded. He wasn't seriously trying to hit him or nothing. I think he just is trying to deliver a message. You ever do that, Roy? No. <laughs> Let the fist do the talking, right? Most of the time. Sometimes the uniform speaks up. Jones, world boxing champion, chicken farmer, and now expert boxing commentator. Not yet an expert. Are you enjoying this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's good to be out here watching other guys take those shots instead of being in there watching those shots come at my head. Everybody says that. <laughs> One minute into round six, Johnny Tapia trying to overcome early damage inflicted by Mexico's Ricardo Vargas as Tapia defends his 115 pound title. Tapia is a true champion. I really like Tapia. I like the things that Tapia does in the ring. Uh, Tapia goes in there. there. Down goes Vargas. And that left hand shot landed against Vargas's glove, which is up against his face, and shows you how much power Tapia does have. I did say Tapia was a strong puncher. He's a very sharp fighter, but he can't lose his composure here because Vargas has very good foot movement. He would not probably, he probably would not catch Vargas anymore. A lot of blood on Tapia now as he tries to finish. He can't get too excited here because Vargas is smart. Vargas wasn't hurt very badly by that shot. You think all that blood is coming from his nose, Roy, or does Tapia have a cut in his mouth, maybe? I think most of it's coming from his nose. No, there is a mouth cut. Uh, Jim, I mentioned that a few rounds ago. There's okay. a mouth cut as well as a, a nose cut. All right. Well, nose that would blood. account for the abundance of blood there as Tapia went in on Vargas and tried to finish. I think the majority of the blood is coming from the nose, though. Which is more bothersome to the fighter? Probably the nose because he has to bleed, but breathe out of the nose. Good short left inside by Tapia. Vargas, with his legs back, tries to regain some level of aggression as well. Vargas chasing Tapia into a corner. Not landing anything hard, but making his presence felt. Now, here comes Johnny with a right and a left. Like I said, Johnny is a very game true champion. He wants to win. He shows the other guy he wants to win. He shows the crowd. He shows the judges. 
show everybody that he is out to keep his title. A normal human being who looks like Johnny Tapia is on the way to the doctor's office. He's staying in there and knocking the other guy down. Don't blow your nose. All you got to do is settle down, Johnny. See what you did when you settled down? Take a look at the knockdown. It was a kind of a half hook, half jab right on the button. Caught Vargas on the way in. Or off balance. He did manage to sneak that, sneak that left hand past the glove. Yeah, he got it past the guarding glove there. Uh, and he was flat-footed facing him, and he was a little off balance. A punch like that can have an important psychological effect on the crowd, on judges, on everyone, because here's Tappy all bleeding. Everybody is thinking he's taking a beating. He turns around that perception with one punch. And it gives him confidence, I think. Maybe it lowers the other guy's confidence level a little bit. It also gives him a 10-8 round. Was that knockdown such that you would have scored it a 10-8 round, Larry? I, I did score it a 10-8 round. Uh, I yeah, my... Sorry, I did also. Awesome. You did too, Harold? OK. Which is very big for Tapi at this point. fight to score. Vargas has outboxed Tapia. Tapia has outslugged Vargas. Now Vargas seems more willing to slug toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tapia, though he's still staying up on his toes and moving. This is not the fight that uh, Vargas wants to fight. He doesn't want to swap with Tapia because Tapia, like I said before, is the champion. Very, very game fighter, much more gamer than Vargas, I think. And that is uh, Tapia's fight, to sit there, trade, prove that he's a warrior. That's what he wants to do. But at the same time, he undoubtedly feels he has to do something to get back into the fight now and turn around the perception that the fight was starting to go Tapia's way. And that's what a good fighter does and a good challenger. Landed for Tapia. Now he comes underneath to the body. Vargas still moving, still up on his toes. Just a little bit more accessible of a target now. Oh, oh, bad, the early rounds. Uh oh. Uh oh. Terrible time. Butt. Unintentional butt. The time. Flip. Come over here. It's, un it's, hey, it's an unintentional clash okay. of head, okay? Now. I don't think it's too bad. It looks, no, looks no, like no, no, blood's no, 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 no. coming from here, both right here, right here. fighters. Right here. Tapia above the left ear on his skull. That can go. All right. And Vargas above the left eye, and you can see that. Okay, time. Here we go. Come both on. are significant wounds. This is turning into a bloodbath. The response of both fighters seems to be, let's try to finish now. <laughs> Heavy leather from Johnny Tapia in the corner right above us. Right before that happened, I was going to give Tapia credit for stopping the right hand now. He wasn't getting hit with the same right hand he had been getting hit with earlier, which caused the mouse upon his eye. Come on. In the midst of them trying to beat the hell out of each other, they're sh shaking hands twice already this round. They've both shown great sportsmanship in the fight, I think. Only great. in prize fighting. Good sportsman. I like to see good sportsmen. Hard right hand there by Vargas. He tries another one and misses. Takes a right hand over the top from Tapia. Both fighters apparently going to make it out of round seven. Now, Harold Letterman. Open up Harold's mic and let's get an interpretation here. If the bout were stopped because of this accidental head, but what happens? Jim, if the fight is stopped at this point, we go to the scorecards. If it's stopped in the middle of a round, we score the partial round and then go to the scorecards. And whoever is ahead on the scorecards is the winner by technical decision. 
Respira con la boca, respira con la boca. Respira con la boca. Let's, let's see if we can catch the butt. Right in there, apparently, was, hap was happening. It just was a, a kind of a glancing, cutting blood, but... Can we keep that bleeding stop, Troy? I don't think so. I think every time he gets hit in that cut, it's going to start back bleeding. Okay. Okay. What about Tapia with the cut apparently on the ear or above the ear on the skull? His cut is not as bad to him as uh, Vargas cut is to him because Vargas cut is right over his eye. Tapia is bleeding down the side and behind his ear, so it won't bother his vision. Either. Tapia, I mean, Vargas may feel more urgency right now with that cut eye, and he's got to stand and trade there, with there, Tapia. There it is, bleeding already. As soon as yep. he got touched, he started bleeding. That's right. Johnny Tapia landed a right hand. Vargas's left eye began to bleed. And it's spurting blood now. Yes, and that's not good. Interesting fight for scoring up to this point. A technical decision would be a matter of some suspense for both fighters. Hard left hand by Tapia as Vargas was coming in. Great combination by Tapia. Over here. Time. Over gonna, here. He's going to call Come the doctor here. in to examine Come over here. Vargas. Looks to me like it's bad now. Busy night for Flip Pomansky. That's it. He's stopping the fight. Now we're going to go to the scorecards? Go to the scorecards. we got to go to the scorecards. Flip said that's enough. Johnny, they're gonna, the, the, the fight can't continue. The cut's too bad. The commission, I believe, is going to go to the scorecard for the unintentional butt. Two, two careers hanging in the balance here. In a major, major fight, Tapia's against Danny Romero in Albuquerque. Tapia's ambition to fight Danny Romero and Albuquerque subject now to the scorecards which are being collected. No, the heat's unable to continue. It's an unintentional but. But when it was unintentional, Bob, if it had been intentional, it would been different. Right. Okay. Can we score this round? Well, you have to ask the commission. Well, Harold Letterman has already told us, yes, there's a partial scoring in this round, which will be a part of the total score for the fight. Is that correct, Harold? This is what Mark Ratner told me in the rules meeting. He says, if it's stopped in the middle of the round, we score the partial round. He was, he was emphatic about it at the rules meeting. What was your scorecard at the time of the stoppage, Harold? Okay, at the time of the stoppage, I have it 77, 74, five rounds to three, Johnny Tapia. I, I mean, I just thought he did enough in that eighth round to win the eighth round. I did give him an extra point on a knockdown, but it's going to be tight. Here comes Michael Buffer. I'm elated, Harold. Due you and I are by the synchronized the exactly. was because of an unintentional headbutt. We will go to the scorecards of the rounds accumulated before this round. We'll have the score for you in just a moment. Now, Michael Buffer said before this round. A and Mark Ratner was emphatic at the rules meeting that we scored a partial round. Well, let's since see. Since both of us gave that round to Tapius, that could be a danger to okay. him. Well, let's go back to the score after seven. After seven, I still have it 67. 65, Johnny Tapia. I have Tapia by two points. The knockdown, remember, was in round number six. If the judges scored a two-point round for Tapia in the sixth, that could well turn out to be the functional margin in the bout. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. The tallies go through six completed rounds under the rules of the World Boxing Organization. No, no, should be seven. Clark San Martino scores the bout, 66. 66, he has it even. That's seven rounds. Tommy Shirley scores the bout. 68 to 64 for Tapia. Bill Graham scores the bout. 66, 66. By majority, it is a technical draw. The champion is still the undefeated WBO champion, Johnny Tapia. Technical majority draw, you heard the numbers.
and those numbers were only through round seven. Now, I saw Mark Ratner talking to you, Harold. What did he say? Mark Ratner was emphatic in the rules spinning. He came over to me, and he said that at the time the fight was stopped, the president of the WBO, Francisco Valdezel, said that they don't score the partial round in the WBO, and he went back to the scores for after seven rounds. One judge still had Tapia ahead, as did I, but what's the difference? Tapia retains the title. Well, Johnny Tapia retains his title, his unbeaten record, but he has the second draw of his career, sandwiched around 29 wins. He had a draw in his first bout, and now a technical draw in his 31st bout. And the question will be, does that keep alive his chances at a Danny Romero fight? Larry Merchant, what do you think? Yes, I think it does. He's still the champion. It's a draw. Uh, the one judge who scored the fight in favor of him had him winning decisively. All right, we have recent information now on the subject of Jimmy Garcia. And sitting with me at ringside here is Nevada State Athletic Commission Dr. Flip Omansky. Flip, am I premature in asking you uh, to tell me what's up with Jimmy Garcia at the hospital? He's at University Medical Center. He's being cared for by Dr. Al Capana, a neurosurgeon. The report I have now is that he's got a subdural hematoma and will probably be going to surgery tonight. A subdural is a blood clot on the brain. He's already had a CAT scan. And uh, uh, again, as I understand it, uh, they're making preparation to take him to surgery at this minute. Well, in fact, you say probably going to surgery at, uh, tonight. If he's got a subdural hematoma, he is in all likelihood going to have surgery as soon as possible. Isn't that correct? That is not 100% correct. Depending on the size and his symptoms is whether he would go to surgery. The way I got a report, and I must tell you this is, you know, by telephone, I wasn't there, is that this is large enough that it would demand surgery. All right. Again, that's preliminary. Are you satisfied that everything possible was done to safeguard Jimmy Garcia here before he was taken away to the hospital? Oh, sure. He had oxygen. He had uh, Decadron before he left. He had a neurosurgeon go to the hospital with him, and they had the CAT scan suite waiting on him. Um, it is one of the factors of boxing we face every time two young men go in the ring. What about the tough decision here to stop this bout between Tapia and Vargas? Tough decision, but a bad cut. I mean, you have to make the decision. Mm -hmm. And you felt that uh, Vargas simply wasn't going to be able to get that bleeding stopped. And in fact, there must have been a chance that he could be further damaged. Oh, it, it, it was in the corner of the left eye. It was deep it, down into the muscle. And the blood would have, would have gone in and affected his vision. You'll keep us posted on Jimmy Garcia. Sure, I will. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Flip Omansky, Nevada State Athletic Commission. So three bouts have now been completed with fascinating results. Let's go back upstairs to James Brown to get set for our main event. All right, Jim, thank you very much, Anna.